Hello, and thank you for joining uh, this uh, graduate uh, open event uh, for our MSc Chemical Process Engineering. Uh, my name is Eva Sorensen, and I am the uh, head of department. Uh, our uh, department is located within UCL, which, as you probably know, is uh, one of the oldest universities in England. Uh, we were only the third to be opened after Oxford and uh, Cambridge. And we were the first that allowed anyone of any religion uh, to join uh, the university. Before that, Oxford and Cambridge only admitted uh, people who were members of the Church of England and men, of course. Uh, UCL was also the very first university to allow women to take degrees. Uh, and this ethos of openness and inclusivity is very much what still characterizes UCL. It's something we're very, very proud of um, and something that we are working hard uh, to maintain. Our department uh, is a very old department. We were the first chemical engineering department to be opened in the UK. So we are celebrating our centenary uh, this year. During that time, we have had a lot of students uh, go through the department. Uh, the programme you have joined to hear about today it was our first MSc programme. Uh, it's the one that has been running the longest uh, and offers a broad perspective at master's level of chemical process engineering. We are lucky to have the programme director with us today, Dr. Adamola Odinsi. Uh, so without any further ado, I will hand over to him um, and he will be running the session with us today. But before I do, I also want to say that we have got a student with us as well, Bill. So if you have any questions uh, about what it may be like to be a student in our department, then he will be very happy to answer those questions. There is a questions uh, Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, so if you have any questions um, as Adam Ola is presenting, please just put your questions there uh, and they will answer those questions at the end of the presentation. So Adam Ola, over to you. Thank you very much, Eva. So I will share my screen and I will start the presentation. Right. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for attending this uh, virtual open day event for the MSc Chemical Process Engineering, and welcome virtually to UCL. So today, very briefly, we'll talk about, I mean, a uh, brief background just to um, highlight some of the things Professor Sorensen has already said. We'll look at the program, MSc Chemical Process Engineering. And of course, uh, we would have a question and answer session. So please do feel free to use the Q&A box to enter your questions. So again, just highlighting what Eva has said, we were established in 1826 and we were the first university in England to admit students from any ethnic class or religious background. And of course, to welcome women on an equal footing with men. Uh, the first in England to teach experimental science, modern European languages and laws. And of course, UCL is still waxing strong today, uh, delivering and providing excellent and relevant research and teaching to the world. So uh, in terms of UCL today, uh, alongside 11 uh, different faculties or as part of 11 different faculties within UCL, uh, we sit within the Faculty of Engineering Sciences. And just to let you know how UCL is making waves across the world, uh, we were awarded the University of the Year 2024 by the Times and Sunday Times Good, Ta Good University Guide. Uh, we are the ninth uh, university in the world by the QS World Rankings 2024. And of course, we are the second in the UK for research power, according to the Research Excellence Framework, REF 2021. Of course, there have been 30 Nobel Prize uh, laureates amongst UCL's alumni and current and uh, former staff to date. So yes, we are very proud of our credentials. In terms of the Faculty of Engineering Sciences, of course, um, the Department of Chemical Engineering sits alongside uh, nine other departments. And of course, uh, the MSc Chemical Process Engineering is run by the Department of 
chemical engineering. Uh, it's important for us to also state that uh, we are well connected uh, in terms of industry as a faculty. Uh, our students, of course, receive world-class study and research provision in state-of-the-art facilities. Uh, what's more, you'll find your program complemented by unbeatable industry connections, which prove invaluable to your experience. So our faculty collaborates with uh, partners in industry, including uh, Google DeepMind, uh, Mercedes, IBM, Facebook, Amazon, and uh, other companies. Please feel free to scan the QR code uh, for more information. Uh, in terms of what we offer uh, career-wise, uh, we've got a dedicated careers team uh, throughout your studies. And of course, that also uh, extends to uh, the first three years after you graduate. And the purpose of this is to support you with one-to-one -one coaching and activities that could help you land a job, placements, and internship or academic position, which you may desire. Uh, so in terms of uh, what we also do to support you, uh, we could help you with reviewing your CV, cover letters, applications, and helping you prepare for interviews, amongst other things. Again, please do feel free to scan the QR code uh, for more information. Uh, UCL is a research-driven university. And as a department uh, in chemical engineering, for example, we support with the how waste can help us get to uh, net zero. Again, please do feel free to uh, scan the QR code to see or check out our disruptive uh, thinkers video series uh, to hear more about uh, the wide range of, I mean, of research that we conduct uh, within the department and also across the faculty of engineering sciences at UCL. Right, and now to the Department of uh, Chemical Engineering. And within the Department of Chemical Engineering, we've got five MSc programs, of which, of course, the MSc Chemical Process Engineering uh, is the longest running of the lot. And we'll talk more about that one today. Uh, but it's also interesting to note that we've got uh, an MPhil and PhD research degree. And of course, we've got the undergraduate uh, BEng and the integrated masters MEng uh, also within the department. And uh, below that gives you, um, you know, an indication of what the statistics uh, is like in the department with uh, well over 500 undergraduate students, uh, more than 100 postgraduate MSc students. So you should be coming into a fairly large community of MSc students, uh, research and staff students. Uh, about 200 academic and teaching staff, 47 admin staff, over 20 and technician staff, over 20 as well. Uh, we do like our research and research is a core activity in the department. And generally there are six themes of research, which is uh, catalysis and reaction engineering, uh, electrochemical engineering, molecular and engineering thermodynamics, multi-phase systems, nature inspired chemical engineering, product and process systems engineering. So if you do join us, I mean, and when you come to do your substantive research project, uh, you will probably fall within one of these uh, six themes. In terms of our campuses, we have two campuses. The main one, which is in central London, is uh, the Bloomsbury campus. And uh, the Department of Chemical Engineering is located in the Roberts Building, the second and the third floors. And of course, uh, two of our MSc programs, the MSc Chemical Process Engineering and the MSc Global Management of Natural Resources uh, are run from the Bloomsbury campus. Our second campus is located in the east of uh, London. And that is where we have three of our new MSc programs, which is the Nature Inspired Solutions, uh, Advanced Propulsion, and the uh, Digital Manufacturing of Advanced Materials. As Professor Sorensen mentioned earlier on, uh, we are 100 years old, the oldest um, chemical engineering department, and we're really going all out to celebrate that. And you can join us, I mean, uh, virtually with the celebrations uh, by viewing our website and seeing all the uh, fantastic events that are laid on. And of course, I mean, to read about our history and see some of the uh, activities uh, that we will be um, participating in for the 100 year celebration. 
Now, to the MSc Chemical Process Engineering. Now, the objective of this uh, program is that it is a one-year postgraduate uh, program, which is uh, designed uh, from a broad range of disciplines, uh, from chemical engineering to mechanical engineering, material science, physics, chemistry. And we have these students who we provide with um, advanced training, which is uh, required for getting into the chemical, biochemical, and or related process industries. And in terms of the structure of the program, uh, the MSc program covers uh, core chemical and engineering subjects, so traditional chemical engineering subjects that you would know about. Uh, but we also offer a broad range of optional modules, which helps you uh, to a large extent customize the program uh, to suit your future aspirations. Uh, and of course, to also broaden your horizon, uh, we also have non-chemical engineering options which you can take. Uh, all students, uh, irrespective, uh, will take a substantive research project. And of course, this will culminate in a thesis and an oral examination. And there are two routes on this, this uh, program, and I'll come to say a bit more. Uh, but for now, uh, we've got the advanced chemical engineering, and we've also got the research route. Uh, and they both have different compulsory and optional modules, which we'll talk about uh, in some more detail. Uh, irrespective of whichever route that you choose, uh, again, you would have to do the substantive I mean, research project. Uh, however, you should also note that each route has been designed for a specific class of students. And the route selection, of course, has important implications as to whether or not you go on to become a chartered uh, engineer with the Institution of Chemical Engineers or the ICHEMI. So uh, before I go on, uh, some more with the uh, structure of the program. Uh, let's delve into a bit what uh, it means to be a chartered chemical engineer. So the uh, body which um, gets engineers chartered, chemical engineers chartered in the UK on behalf of the Engineering Council is the Institution of Chemical Engineers or the ICHEME. And when you do go on to become a chartered chemical engineer, you are demonstrating your professional competence and commitment uh, to employers, policymakers, regulators, and to the society at large. Um, as part of uh, becoming chartered, you get additional letters behind your name as uh, MI Chemi and uh, CEng, which stands for Chartered Chemical Engineer. And essentially what this is doing or saying is that uh, you hold the gold standard in chemical and process engineering. Uh, further information can be found on the iChemy website over here. Um, in terms of becoming chartered, uh, there are very many, uh, or there are several, I mean, membership grades, and you might find that you might have to jump through some of them before you eventually get to uh, a chartered member. So for example, as a student, you might have to start out as a student member, become an affiliate member and so on before you eventually get chartered and the different requirements for um, getting into this uh, various membership grades. So how do you become chartered? To become chartered, you need uh, to go through three stages. The first of which is the educational base. And this is one of the places where we come in. And here you need to demonstrate your knowledge and understanding of chemical engineering. And it's important to state that if you have got an accredited undergraduate chemical engineering degree, and together with our MSc Advanced Chemical Engineering route, uh, that will make uh, uh, or that will give you the complete requirements for the educational stage so that that fast tracks you onto stage two and stage three. Stage two is the initial professional development where, of course, I mean, you demonstrate your experience and development uh, competencies. And in stage three, which is a professional review where you need to write up a competence and commitment report. And you might also need to undergo an interview before you eventually become chartered. To check whether or not your degree is accredited by the ICME, uh, you can go to the Engineering Council's accredited uh, course database and that's the uh, web address. And uh, you can type in your degree and your university and check whether or not it is accredited. If it is not, I should say that there is still the opportunity to become uh, accredited, but it's a slightly longer route and you have to go through what is called the individual case procedure. 
So let's come back to the um, structure of the program and let's see how some of the things that we've said um, uh, actually link up together. So um, generally there is the MSc Chemical Process Engineering. So that's the umbrella program. And there are two routes, like I have said earlier on, there is the advanced route, which is the one which is accredited by the iChemi at the F standard. F standard simply means further learning for C -Eng status. And uh, typically students who have an accredited, uh, an iChemi accredited undergraduate degree in chemical engineering uh, will tend to go for this route. And there is the research route, which is not accredited by the iChemi. However, uh, students who have uh, non-accredited uh, or non-iChemi accredited uh, chemical engineering degrees or non-chemical engineering degrees tend to go for this. Uh, even though I say that, ultimately, uh, the choice will be yours, whether you go for the advanced route or the research route. And when you do come on to join us, we will give you more information as to how you can make that decision. Uh, irrespective of whichever route you go on to take, um, you will have to complete a substantive uh, research project. Now, we have uh, a small number of students who opt to go for uh, a two-year MSc program. And this is um, the MSc um, Chemical Process Engineering with a year in industry. And so what happens is we have a limited number of students who wish, after they must have joined us, uh, they may wish to transfer onto the two-year program. So you will complete the one-year MSc program as normal, like any other student. And if you do want to then take a whole year out uh, to go on to industry, to get some industry experience, uh, then you may opt to transfer onto the two-year uh, program, which is the MSc Chemical Process Engineering with year in industry. Uh, you will need to apply for and be selected for an industrial placement. And then uh, for that year long that you are in industry, you will need to complete an industrial research project, which is a 120 credit module, and it is a pass or a fail. Now to the advanced chemical engineering route. Uh, the route comprises 180 credits. In other words, that is the credit load you need to fulfill for us to award you with an MSc. Uh, as I said earlier on, it is accredited by the iChemi at F standard and combined with an accredited undergraduate chemical engineering degree, this meets all the academic requirements for becoming a chartered chemical engineer. But I should say this, um, even if you've got an undergraduate degree, which is accredited by the iChemi, and you do go on to successfully complete the advanced chemical engineering route uh, on the MSc Chemical Process Engineering, uh, you cannot just take your certificate to the iChemi the next day after you graduate and say, I want to become chartered. Uh, no, that's not the way it works. Uh, you need some uh, bit of experience under your belt, whether in industry or in academia and so on. You need about four years worth of that. Uh, and it is together with that experience and your academic knowledge that you can then approach the iChemi uh, to become chartered. Of course, there's a lot more information about how this works on the iChemi website. Uh, in terms of what you need to do for the uh, advanced chemical engineering route, uh, each student will be required to take nine modules. And of these nine modules is the research project, which is 60 credits. So that works out to be exactly one third of the credit load that you need uh, to successfully complete uh, the program and be awarded an MSc. And the other, there are eight other top modules that make up the balance 120 credits. So in addition to the research project module, there are three other top modules which are compulsory on this route. And the remaining five top modules are what you refer to as optional modules. And we'll talk about that a bit more, okay? And that gives you the option to you know, choose modules that might interest you uh, and that sort of fit into your future aspiration. The second route is the research route. And like the advanced route, it is also made up of 180 credits. However, Unlike the advanced route, it is not accredited by the iChemi. And generally we intend this route for students with uh, non-iChemi uh, accredited first degrees in chemical engineering or some other cognate discipline, 
So it could be physics, chemistry, mechanical engineering, and so on. Again, each student will take nine modules. Uh, you've got to complete the research project, which is 60 credits. And then you have eight top modules, which make up the balance 120 credits. Uh, in addition to the research project, there are two additional top modules, which are compulsory. And the remaining six top modules are electives or optional modules. And you will notice that in comparison to the advanced route, you have one additional degree of freedom or one additional module uh, that you can choose to further customize this uh, to what you want to do. So I should say, um, even though we sort of have a class of students in mind for each of the routes, ultimately the decision is yours, what route you decide to go for but we will provide you with uh, more information. And when you do join us, I'm typically quite happy to have one-to-one -one meetings uh, with students to help you decide uh, on what route you want to uh, um, go for. Now, let's talk about the sorts of uh, chemical engineering modules that you may uh, experience. So the first lot is what we refer to as a compulsory module. So these are modules that you must complete. Uh, so there isn't really an option here. This must be done. And of course, the research project is one of them. And then you also have uh, allied um, research allied uh, modules, which are the research skills and the research methods. And if you are on the advanced route, then you also must complete the process engineering, modeling and design. And this is both compulsory and also non condonable In other words, you must pass it for us to award you uh, an MSc under the um, advanced chemical engineering route uh, uh, umbrella. The next sets of, of the modules which you would experience, which are chemical engineering modules, but are optional modules. The first lot are what we refer to as depth modules. And the depth modules are typically made up of traditional chemical engineering modules. So these are stuff like your um, advanced separation processes, chemical reaction engineering, data-driven process engineering. So traditional core chemical engineering subjects. You then have the breath modules, which are more specialized uh, modules. And this may include uh, the nature inspired chemical engineering, renewable energy in the resources sector, energy systems and sustainability, and so on. Uh, of course, to broaden your horizon, you also have the option of non chemical engineering modules which include environmental systems, bioreactor engineering, uh, mastering um, entrepreneurship, uh, project management for engineers, and so on. Now, uh, depending on which route you decide to go for, uh, of course, the list of compulsory and optional modules uh, will be different. And of course, there is uh, more information on the program website, including uh, a synopsis of each of the modules. So you can expect to find the learning outcomes and what you can learn on each of the modules. How would we teach and assess you? So each of the modules typically will have three to four hours of taught content per week uh, in one or two sessions, okay? So, and uh, each module will approach uh, teaching us an assessment slightly differently. But what you can certainly expect is that most of the modules will have full face-to-face -face teaching. And of course, we will supplement that with additional online material or content wherever appropriate. So this could include guest lectures, revision sessions, or pieces of work, which we set you and you have to complete in your own time. Uh, in the face-to-face -face sessions, again, this could include uh, lectures, it could include group tutorial work, discussions, uh, guest lecturers, which we invite from industry, and of course, practical laboratory activities. Uh, assessment typically will uh, take the form of costworks, uh, mini projects, report writing, examinations, group work, quizzes, and so on. And these could either be formative or summative. Formative typically are practical practice exercises that we set you to help you build the skill set and the confidence to be able to complete a piece of work, but it doesn't add to us um, your final grade. However, summative are pieces of work that we set you and will add and count towards your uh, final grades. What will you learn on this program? irrespective of the route you decide to go for. Uh, there will be in-depth uh, knowledge of core chemical engineering subjects. You will make advanced use of computers in designing processes, 
uh, operation and management. Uh, safety is important, and you will come across hazard identification, quantification and mitigation, risk management and loss prevention. Uh, we have a lot of emphasis on sustainability and energy systems and efficiency. Uh, so you'd look at renewable energy sources and advanced design of energy systems. Uh, you will learn how to become comfortable and able to make decisions under uncertain scenarios or where you have got limited available data. You would learn how to plan, conduct, and manage a complex uh, research project uh, from start and take it to a logical conclusion. So to the research project, um, the way it works in the department is that it is an individual research project under the supervision of a member of academic staff. And typically the topics that you will be asked to choose a project from uh, will be in areas where uh, academic members of staff are currently active. Uh, and it will probably fall within one of those six themes that I showed uh, in the earlier slides. Uh, the project actually takes place in the summer, however, Preparations start from term one. So you will know the project you're dealing with from term one, and you'll start working on your literature uh, review and so on from term one. So in doing that, you will learn how to carry out uh, critical literature surveys, uh, determine and design experiments and develop models, collect and analyze data, present and discuss results, draw conclusions and offer recommendations in a clear and succinct manner. Key learning outcomes from the research project, we would like you, after you must have gone through the research project, to be able to, to be aware of advanced research methods, uh, demonstrates that you can uh, think independently and critically analyze information and results. You should be able to present your findings from your research in, um, orally at a standard which is expected at national and international conferences. And you should also have developed skills for reporting your results uh, clearly and concisely. So, having gained all this knowledge from us, we know that you would then want to go and apply this um, in industry or in jobs that, I mean, uh, you would like to take on after your uh, degree with us. Uh, so typically our graduates are expected to be involved in the development of uh, new materials, food processing, water treatment, pharmaceuticals, transport and energy resources. And of course, we expect our graduates to be in the front line of addressing uh, very present environmental issues such as climate change. And I looked over the last two, three years at uh, some of the uh, roles that some of our graduates have stepped into. And I've listed just a few of them here. So we've got our graduates who have gone on to become process engineers, energy engineers or analysts, consultants, data and artificial intelligence uh, analysts, operations engineers, HSC supervisors as health, safety and environment, uh, fuel cell engineers, and some of them are also researchers and PhD students like uh, Yiming who is on the call today. Um, example of uh, companies uh, which our past students have gone on to work for include Wood, uh, SubC7, ENI, uh, Royal Dot Shell, BP, and so on and so forth. So um, we partner very much on the program and as a department with the UCL careers to organize our careers events. This is where, I mean, uh, potential employers do come on campus to come and give career talks and you have the opportunity to network with them and to speak to them about what the requirements for their various graduate programs are. And of course the UCL careers also supports uh, uh, enhancing your CV, cover, write, cover letter writing skills and preparing you for assessment centers and interviews. Uh, we also partner with the British Chemical Engineering Contractors Association, the SICA for short, and typically what we have is uh, graduate engineers who are young engineers like yourselves uh, do come in and make an industry presentation. And they also have a task, an industry-based task, which you work through together. And of course, there's also the opportunity for networking. Uh, for those who are interested in the uh, research side of things, uh, departmental seminar series uh, goes on. Uh, where topical research issues are discussed by expert academics from universities around the world. So 
it's not just me saying these things, but uh, we're very lucky to have uh, excellent testimonials from our past uh, students. Uh, Iloho, for example, says that the program has offered a unique blend of courses in engineering. Adeline did say that uh, the program gave her an opportunity to tailor her project uh, to her own liking. Talks about first-rate facilities and, of course, the opportunity to interact with current and postgraduate students. Juyang also talked about UCL being an abundant ocean of resources and the MSc Chemical Process Engineering being uh, beneficial for life. Uh, Anastasius also talks about the freedom to implement his own ideas and the unique opportunities which the program uh, provides. So for those who might be uh, looking to uh, go through UCL to obtain accommodation, um, there are um, different options for accommodation from catered to self-catered, catered into collegiate halls to independent uh, uh, providers, I mean, private landlords. Um, if um, you're interested in that, uh, the steps for applying are outlined there. You would need to get in touch with the student accommodation uh, online services, uh, where you would need to register with your surname, student number, your name, and your email address, and you would need to complete and submit your application. Uh, one of the key things to note is that for international postgraduate students, you of course need to get your application in by the 30th of June at the very latest. So uh, having said all that, uh, we're situated in London. We are in the capital of the United Kingdom and London is a fantastic city to be in. It's a very multicultural and a very vibrant city, never a dull moment. Uh, uh, so many things for you to do. Excellent transportation network and connection to the rest of the UK and of course, other European countries. Uh, here's some information regarding scholarships and bursaries. And uh, there are a number of uh, deadlines there for you to take notice of. Uh, please do feel free to scan the QR code and uh, you can find more information on our website. Please do stay in touch. Uh, we'd like to hear from you and we'd like to keep in touch with you and to answer any questions that you may have. So those are various uh, social media handles. Uh, feel free to use them and uh, to stay in touch with us. And we'd also ask that before you go, you can also scan the QR code and uh, just take a moment to let us know uh, how you have found the event today. few seconds to scan. Finally, there is even further information available. And you have, if you have any questions, of course, uh, there is an email address there that you can write to where we can pick up your questions. Uh, there's a QR code and the web addresses to our various pages where you can also find further information. And of course, we are also here today to answer your questions. And so I will stop sharing and uh, I'll be happy to take your questions. Thank you. So just look in the Q&A box and then see. Oh, kindly send me the uh, link for the... Uh... Okay, all right. Um, I was wondering, I mean, either Mark or, um, or Yiming, if you could please do that, that would be great. Okay. So someone says, thank you, Dr. Adimola, for the explanation. I have a question regarding the CP program that might support net zero emission industry. One of the motivation, I suppose, I enrolled for the CP program is that my country is having a plan on increasing the electricity generation industry from renewable energy, in especially geothermal and hydropower. How deep and what aspect technical or fundamental that the CP modules can cover regarding this renewable energy sectors? Is that specific modules beside, other specific modules beside the renewable resources that could support advancement or research? 
So thank you very much uh, for that uh, question. Uh, yes, we do have uh, modules that uh, cover that area. Of course, the uh, renewable uh, a renewables energy module is one of those that looks at a broad range of uh, renewable uh, resources where uh, you can look at them uh, to varying depths. Uh, uh, um, particularly, I mean, different types of technology. Uh, you also have the energy systems and uh, sustainability as well, which also loop in this area as well. Uh, how much they go into the technical uh, beats of uh, geothermal and hydropower en um, energy, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, you do have modules that definitely will introduce you to this area and hopefully also provide you with resources and materials uh, for you to explore even some more. And then there is another question that says, do we have an option to opt for industrial research project? If yes, then are there any connections with the industry for the same? So typically what happens is that uh, if you think you want to do an industrial project, uh, we will encourage you more to consider the um, year in the industry program because the research project which you do with us tends to be more of the academic nature in the first year. But if you're so inclined to do a project with the year in industry, then we can give you more information and see how we support you to, you know, uh, um, get, you know, uh, that year in industry program with uh, an industry which is of interest to you. And uh, that is perhaps more of where you can, you know, uh, um, tailor, you know, uh, your research in that direction. But what you do with us in the first year tends to be areas of specialty of our academic members of staff. Right. Okay. I shall look. Do we have an option? Okay, I think I've answered. I think I've answered that one. Okay, let's see in the charts. Okay, now. Right. Any more questions? Right, uh, maybe while we do that, I can invite uh, Bill to introduce himself and you know, perhaps also talk about the program uh, from his own perspective. Oh, yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Yi Ming, or you can call me Bill. So uh, I'm um, the UCL master student in the CTE in the 2023. Right now, uh, I'm the PhD student at UCL in 2024, starting in 2024. So yeah, I have my last year at, uh, running through the whole um, master program in the CTE. Uh, I, I would say um, the CPE program is quite challenging. Um, in, there are quite a different area with courses we can select with. Um, it depends on what you interested. Uh, so my interesting area is uh, within the battery stuff, uh, with uh, electrochemistry. So all my modules are selected based on the uh, battery stuff, material, uh, thermodynamics, also uh, some of the related to the electrochemistry. And then I continue my module and apply for the PhD, PhD program. Now I'm a PhD student. Uh, there are definitely other, other modules that I can select with, or you can be uh, learning some Python stuff, like deep learning, that's not the other module. Or you're interested with uh, water treatment or, or something with, with, with other stuff that definitely can select with. Um, yeah, there are, are, are different things like uh, basically in the first term, uh, if, and a second term, uh, you learn basic course, basic modules, uh, and there's attendance class. And the third term, uh, we have like uh, <clears throat> a project. This will be a three or four month project. We will go to the lab to learning with, with, with uh, how to run it with uh, like uh, uh, as a, a pre PhD student or to doing the research. Or you can do uh, uh, other uh, other other things like uh, uh, doing uh, cooperation with industries or uh, some stuff. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, can you guys hear me? 
Uh, Doctor Tamola, I think you're muted. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, good, I can. Good. I can uh, hear you. I can hear okay. you. Right. Okay. Uh huh. There, 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 there are a couple of questions which uh, let me just I mean uh, address them. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, one of the questions is in this economic um, crisis, how has the employability rate been impacted? Um, I would say that I mean uh, UCL students have gone on to do fairly well um, still. Um, in spite of that, um, I think um, what we offer in terms of, I mean, uh, the skill set is such that, you know, uh, it gives you that very, uh, I mean, a diverse range of options to go into. I mean, as I often say, I mean, I've known our students who don't even go into core chemical engineering practice. I've known students who go into finance. I've, go, I've known students who go on into consultancy. So yes, of course, there is the economic crisis, but I think uh, the skill set that you get from us uh, gives you uh, a broad range of skill set for you to sort of weather the situation, is what I would say. And then the other one says, thank you for the previous question. Maybe one question more. Knowing that there is also uh, a new course, Advanced Proportion, does CPE still conduct research regarding uh, battery or electrochemistry? Yes. And I think uh, Yumin can say that I think he did his um, MSc project in that. So yeah, maybe you want to say a bit more about that. Oh, yes. So um, definitely. Um, so currently I belong to the EIL, like which uh, has a battery uh, research group in out the UCL. So uh, in here we have different professors like uh, in, in chemical process engineer, like some professors belong to the CPE project, some professors belong to the advanced uh, proportion project. So uh, but what we do all belong to the EIL, like a battery research group. It's just depending like what battery uh, or electrical system you're interested with. Like for me, I'm doing the listening software battery research. Uh, some research is lithium iron battery, uh, some research is flow battery research or fuel cell battery, say all battery research. Uh, so it's really hard to tell uh, which battery we are in interesting ways, but uh, definitely yes, uh, the CPE and uh, the ones uh, proportion, these two uh, courses all pr provide uh, battery and electrochemistry research, yes. Yeah, excellent. Thank you for that. I mean, one thing which I would say is, I mean, one thing which the CPE does for you is, I mean, it opens up a lot of options for you. So, I mean, you might find out that, you know, uh, it's very broad ranged and it gives you the opportunity for, um, you know, selecting modules that, you know, fit into what you want to do, really. Happy to take any more questions you may have. Okay, I'm interested in process safety. Would you please explain to me a bit about this uh, module? Right, good. So um, the advanced safety and loss prevention um, is, I mean, uh, a very interesting module, which we take, like you would know, I mean, safety, uh, life sustainability is the bedrock of uh, a lot of the things that we do and we cannot do without, you know, being safe. And so this takes you through uh, various, I mean, uh, techniques and methods, okay, uh, for assessing for safety and for designing uh, your process with safety in mind. So from the basics of hazard identification, hazard analysis, to some uh, more advanced methods like your hazard and operability studies, like your HAZOPs, uh, to even more advanced methods like your LOPA or your layer of protection analysis and so on. So these are some skill sets that you get. Uh, you learn to analyze uh, past scenarios from industry and you get to understand what, I mean, went wrong perhaps in those um, uh, 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 scenarios, you learn lessons from them. And then of course we can apply that in a forward thinking manner uh, into our own uh, engineering uh, today. So yeah, um, yeah, that's just a nutshell of what happens in there. I don't know whether you took that module, uh, you, think, uh, you might want to say more. Uh, yes, I take the processing like in safety module last year. So yes, uh, basically Dr. Adamola uh, already explained most of the things. Yes, uh, so this course basically we just, uh, uh, so first we need to learn what is hazard, what is risk, uh, what the definition of those words, and then we'll learn from scenario from the past, like what, what the accident will be, 
uh, and you know, the the safety is not only the, the in the industry the uh, the the web safety uh, the online safety like uh, it's also the hazard or or something so and in in the last uh, we have like a project to design uh, like a route like how to control the safety to minimize the safety in 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 the project yes that's most of the things <laughs> okay um, are we taught the softwares related to process safety like safety? I don't know, did you use any software? In that? Oh, we didn't uh, use the software uh, in the course, but in the project, I believe they do. Because I, I remember um, the, the safety is taught by Professor um, Harun. Harun, yes. Uh, so Professor Harun, uh, one of my colleagues are uh, my, my friend. I take the project with Professor Harun, and they did they do using a special software. But unfortunately, I'm not taking that project, so I'm not very familiar with. But they do have a like, specific, uh, software. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's true. I mean, particularly if you do projects in that area, your research projects in that area. Yeah, uh, thinking about it now, I, I know of a student last year who did a project in that area. So yeah, you might get to use software in that area, but I'm not sure about the modules. The module uh, gives you the um, the theoretical aspects and the practical aspects in terms of, I mean, looking at scenarios and, you know, uh, designing for safety. All right, we still have some time and happy to take more questions you may have. Okay, seems like we uh, we have gradually hit um, steady state with the questions, yeah? We gradually hit steady state with the questions. Right, um, just, you know, in um, conclusion, um, it's fantastic that you've um, attended. Um, there is loads and loads of information on our website. Please do feel free. I mean, um, my details are on uh, the website. You can drop me an email and uh, I'll be more than happy, you know, uh, to answer your questions as best I can. Um, if there's anything that, I mean, you're not sure about or you're not clear about, I mean, do feel free to uh, come back to us and ask. I hope you've uh, found it helpful today. Uh, thank you very much to uh, Yiming and uh, also to Mark for helping make this happen. Um, yeah, if there are absolutely no more questions, I think it's fair for us to um, say thank you to everyone and uh, bring the session to a close. Yeah, and my email address is in the is in the charts there and also on the web pages. So feel free. Thank you and bye bye everyone.